Okay class, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to render out your animation in a sequence in a fast, efficient way. So first off, what I'm showing you in class is you're going to be doing a make preview render here. So you're going to click on in your camera viewport, click on the plus sign at the top, go to create preview, create preview animation. And in here, it's going to ask you which uh, frames you want to render. Um, I'm going to render my active time segment, which is 0 to 4,000 frames. And I only want to see geometry. You don't want to render out your shapes or your lights or your cameras or anything else like that. Um, the rest of that can stay unchecked. You don't need any information here. But what I do want is to make sure my render level is on realistic. I have textures enabled, background, and highlights. So by default, um, the make preview is going to try to render out an AVI file, but instead of rendering out a video file, you can change it to custom file. Click on file and find the area that you want to do your render. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'm just going to call this test render. And instead of using an AVI file, I'm going to use a PNG file. I want to make a PNG sequence. I'm just going to call this fly through underscore. And the reason I'm putting the underscore here is because it's going to put a four digit number behind the actual name you, of the file that you give it. So once you get that, um, go to setup. And you want to make sure you have your RGB set to 24 bit, not 48 bit. 48 bit is only useful if you're making content for 4K monitors. If not, then don't use that. This is just going to increase the file size to a ridiculous amount. So leave it on uh, RGB 24 bit, turn off alpha channel, and hit OK. So sometimes when you go to hit save, the, the dialogue will come up again. So just hit OK. And then when you go to create, you'll see it's going to play through your animation frame by frame. And it's going to give you a preview of what it's doing here. And you'll see on the timeline right here that it's going through every single frame. Now, mine has a lot of stuff in it. So that's why it's moving really, really slow like this. So I'm going to cancel this out and show you something I already have uh, prepared. So I'm going to stop and don't play that. So once you get your actual sequence rendered out, you can go into Adobe After Effects. I'm going to load that up really quick. Yeah, you can go into Adobe After Effects and you can import your PNG sequence into there and make a video file out of that. And it'll come up a lot better than if you were trying to make a video out of 3ds Max. So when you get the little dialog, when it pops up, um, don't do anything at all. Just close out of it. Don't don't um, make a new composition. Don't do anything else. So you want to start off as a blank composition like nothing there you want to make sure there's no information in your document and when you do that you want to go over to the project tab right here it's always going to be on the left hand side by default and you want to double click in this negative area here and it's going to bring up your file explorer and it's going to ask you what you want to import so I already have a sequence prepared for you guys check this out I'm going to change the view. I'm going to sort uh, by details. So you can see this is the image sequence that exported. So I gave it a name, house underscore, and it gives it a four di digit number and it goes in a complete sequence. And if I go down here, I have 3,507 um, frames. So when you import your sequence here, you don't import all your files at once. You only need to click on the very first file in the sequence. 
So once you click on that file, you'll notice down here that it says PNG sequence. You want to leave that check, import as footage, leave that, and hit open. And now what it did was it imported your your image sequence as a video. So it already pre-made your image sequence into a video file. Sort of like it's storing it into memory. So now what you want to do is you have you maybe have two tabs down here. One says none and the other says render queue. You want to go to where it says none because this is going to be your where your composition stage is going to be. So once you drag this down to here, you notice that it'll put it on the stage for you and it'll also make your stage the, the correct dimensions of your PNG sequence. So you'll notice up here it made an extra file right here called composition and basically what this is if I go to composition settings take a look at what it did it took the width and the height information from the PNG sequence and it actually formatted it to that um that dimension and it also took the duration of the entire sequence and it put it down in here so your your timeline down here is going to be the exact duration of your PNG sequence so this is something that's really straightforward and cool and you want to leave it on 30 frames per second because everything that you export out of max by default if unless you change the the time configuration it's always going to be based on 30 frames per second so now when you have your png sequence in here you can go over here to the preview and hit play and you'll see it play in the viewport so i let you know that you actually have something in here. Now this is not going to be the real time playback. This is going to be playback based on um, however big your file is and how, how much RAM you have and what speed your RAM is. So you'll get different degrees of uh, speed in here. So you see this little green line that's um, forming as I scroll through the timeline when I hit play. Now when I turn off play and go back to first frame and play again you'll notice that it plays a lot faster and smoother so what this is doing um, what this is doing right here is it's caching your uh, your render sequence into memory so it'll play faster the second time so that's what this green line does so anything past that green line is gonna play slow you see now it's starting to slow back down again and now it's processing that green line again because it's, um, it's storing all of this into memory so depending on how much memory you have on your computer, uh, you may be able to store part of the sequence or the entire sequence. But now that we have the sequence in here, now we want to render it out. So we need to add a render queue. So to do that, you want to make sure you are selected on this composition right here before you go anywhere else. Go up to composition, add render queue. And now you'll see it switches to this tab again, and now you actually have uh, a queue here. You'll have three different options in here, and I'm just going to go over just the first uh, the first three options. So under here on the render settings, I'm going to click on the the highlighted part where it says best settings. And by default, you really don't want to change anything in here because um, it's going to use your composition frame rate, which is 30. It's going to use your work area only, which you have it completely expanded out if you didn't change anything. And the size is right, so you can just hit OK in here. You don't need to change anything in there. And the next one uh, is the output module. So this one you have to change. So when you go to output module, this is the format that you want to output your video into. So I definitely don't want an AVI file. I want to use an H.264. So this is the standard for MP4 playback. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to go to Format Options. And I'm going to make sure my profile is set to high and level is all the way at 5.1. And then the reason I'm doing that is because of the resolution of my video. Because I'm running out at 1280 by 720 which is um, HD. It's not full HD but it's, it is the HD format. And I want to use a constant bit rate. That's what CBR stands for. And VBR is variable uh, bit rate. Um, I don't like using this because sometimes you'll notice that 
certain things don't come out right when you kind of do this. So I use constant bit rate for my video files. It just works better. And then you can set the, the bit rate. Um, I set mine something high, like 20. You don't need to really go above that and hit OK. Now, unless you have audio, um, you don't need to check this at all. So if you don't have any audio in, it, in your uh, sequence, let's say if you want to add a, a MP3 file or a WAV file onto your stage, you can kind of put that to have background music. But if you don't have any audio in your file, you don't need to check this at all. So hit OK there. And now the last module over here is output two. This is the actual save file. So you see right here it says house.mp4. So this is the, the name that it's going to give it. So the name uh, house came from what my PNG sequence was originally named. So when I put it on the stage, it took the name from my PNG sequence and made it the composition name. So the composition name is what the name of your output file is going to be down here. So clicking down here, and now I'm going to find somewhere for my render to go, where I know. So architecture, house, renders, house.mp4. I'm going to save that. And all you do from here is just hit render. And it's going to go through your entire animation. You can see the little yellow line going through here. It's going to process everything. So pretty much what that green line was doing before, uh, going through and processing your animation, um, storing it into memory, now it's actually using the uh, the CPU to, to render out your animation. Um, After Effects actually does use a lot of RAM as well. So um, the more RAM you have and the higher speed it is, the faster this will be. And you can go through and change your settings in here to kind of get uh, a better idea of what um, things are going to look like. So I'm just going to stop this and kind of show you what the finished product is going to look like. Because I've already done this. So going to my file explorer here, I'm just going to go to that file, that area here. You can kind of see that um, the house.mp4 is right here. But right now it's still being, um, well, I stopped it so it's not being processed. So now I can click on it. And now you can see it plays. So you don't even actually have to finish the entire render for it to be processed out. So if I stopped it and it gave me what it um, had previously. So this is pretty much how you export your, your image sequence out into After Effects and then render it out with the video. If you have any questions, just email me.